Uh, because with submodules you have a separate history, you can continue treating that subproject as a separate project altogether. Um, you can easily, you can fairly easily push changes back to that subproject, and it's more easily configured. I think we lost the uh, slide there. Just give that a second. We'll paint the word picture. My uh, my beer is pretty loud. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and in the case of subtrees, um, it's sometimes a little bit easier to understand and to use because that history is grafted into your main project history. Um, and there's some neat options like the ability to take subproject history and squash it into one commit um, when adding a new subtree. So there's a few in your commit, new commands to learn. So the repos that we're going to be using here um, is we have one under Kyle's account. Yeah. I did not accept that invite, so I will do that now. Okay, <laughs> that's all right. Um, so there's a repo under Kyle's account, so it's Kyle Macy slash parent project demo. There's a repo under my account, which is a Hector Sector parent project demo. Um, and then there's a repo, so those are going to be the parent projects, and then we're going to be using the sub project under uh, GitHub school slash sub project demo. Just give you a chance to get those, and I just have to accept yeah. Kyle's invite. Very good. So I can commit to his project. If it seems like that's mildly underprepared, we had this uh, illusion of grandeur that we'd have two giant screens and we'd be the dueling laptops. Um, and then we arrived and we're like, oh, well, that's less realistic. So we're going to be we're going to be swapping off on iTerm tabs. Should be just as much fun though. At least it gives everyone a chance to clone. Yeah. Is it just as easy to do? It's got to go on the other screen. Oh, yeah, but I mean, like, to accept the invite. Mm -hmm. Did you do it for me? Yeah, I did it for Thank you. Thank you. You're amazing. I get that a lot. <laughs> All right. So we've got, uh, so Kyle will be over on the left. You want to take red? I can do red. Kyle will do red. I'll take uh, the right side and I'll do the subtrees on the right side. And that way it's consistent with submodules versus subtrees. Uh, so the first step that we'll run through, um, did you clone the projects yet? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. So the first step we'll run through is we'll clone those projects down just like you all probably did. We should be good. Okay. So I will go ahead and clone mine. What was it? Parrot project demo. demo. Yeah. You spelled your username wrong. Great. You'd think I would know how to spell that. And then I'll let Kyle go ahead and clone his. See what you did there. <laughs> I like how you brought back that joke from <laughs> 13 seconds ago. Well, oh, let's make it a good thinking. Yeah, that's called thinking on the fly, right there. <laughs> All right, let's uh, CD into both of those projects. Do you mind? No, please. Shouldn't rename it, shouldn't we? No, it's fine. Whatever you want to do. There we go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we have that shared uh, sub project. We're going to add that to both of our repos. 
All right. You want to do that first? You want me to do that first? I can do that first. Okay. All right. So, like Hector said, it's a little bit easier, I think, um, to add a submodule uh, to a um, to a Git project. Uh, it is a straightforward command. Git submodule add, and you just kind of give it a remote here. And I specified a name for it to go into. There we go. And just like that, if we look in our subprojects here, uh, we have our uh, demo downloaded in there. Okay. So in the case of a subtree, we need to, it's a little bit of a more complex command just because we need to um, identify how exactly we want to incorporate the subprojects changes. I'm going to run here to my subtree example. And so the command is git subtree add. And then this prefix is going to be how we're going to refer to the subproject. What did you call it? Subproject? Yeah, just call it sure. demo, but whatever you want to call it. Demo? I'll just call it subproject. That's good. Um, and then the URL. Am I off screen? I'm off screen. There we go, GitHub School, subproject demo. And then uh, that squash option is what's going to take the project's history. And as opposed to getting the entire project's history, when I use that squash option, what I'm actually going to get is just a squash commit of that project's history. OK. You know what I think would be kind of cool? is if you showed them, like if you make changes in the subproject, like how you can see that diff sort of thing, okay. like what files you've changed. Sure. It, I'm sure it's pretty difficult with subprojects. <laughs> um, well, it's not, and that's because the subproject itself, it's almost like we planned this. Um, <laughs> it's because the subproject itself, since it's a part of the parent project, it's just a diff of the last commit. So if we look at the log here, oops, let's try that again. If we look at the log there, we could just do a diff of the very last commit. Oh, so you can just run git diff. Yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, and so just really quick to show you, um, well, I've already shown you the log. I think what would be interesting is if you show the log. Yeah. See how that's different. Show, show the good, good log here. Um, what's interesting about that, that I should have probably showed off in the last one here, is that if I go back up into my uh, project here, you can see we have uh, some stats here. And uh, we actually have to commit in. Um, well, we're running off screen here. Oh, no, we're not. Not up there, we're not. Can you all see that, or is that too low? That's OK. Too low? No, it's fine. Um, yeah, hide the doc. Hide the doc. Or you can move it to the other screen. Hide the doc, he says. Just don't bring up iMessage. I don't know what's there. <gasps> Scandal. Or Slack, for that matter. Oh, goodness. I opened the trash. Let's, how do you hide the doc? Or move the window up. You know, there's so many options. Did you get it? I just moved it to the other one, to the other screen. Yeah. Actually, we should probably make this a little bit um, easier. I didn't know there was going to be a test on <sighs> OSX functionality. That wasn't rehearsed. There we go. It's a little easier. But it looks like you're getting it. You're doing a stellar job. Thanks. There we go. Cool. A little bit easier. And then we can make that dock go away again. Cool. OK. And so you wanted to? I was going to commit in uh, these changes that I okay. left, left kind of hanging out here. Um, so you, know, you have an active commit here um, to add your submodule uh, to the project. And what's interesting about this um, is that when you run git log here, 
online. <laughs> um, this is a separate commit. None of the history from the uh, sub-module shows up uh, in your parent. Um, looking a little bit at diffs, Hector, Hector was showing off how to diff uh, with a sub-project. And um, so if, if we make some changes here in uh, Yeah, right there. yeah, some sort of comment or something. And it should just be as easy, I would think, because he just ran git diff. I should be able to just run git diff. Ooh. Oh, that looks weird. Uh, it's OK. We can, we can fix this. Um, Kyle, these are good experts here. Come on. Listen, this is how everybody does software development, and y'all know it. <laughs> if anybody, did anybody know? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Raise your hand if you actually knew that this was the command to get diffs from a submodule from a parent. Yeah, not a single person. Wow. Y'all would have been on Stack Overflow. <laughs> um, so just command C. <laughs> <laughs> and command V and oh, it, it has a little flag. Eh, we don't need that. Aha! There we go. We have a diff from our submodule, <laughs> like a real software developer. Okay. So why did you have to do that, Kyle? Why did I have to do that? Because uh, the entire uh, staging areas and Git indexes or indices are different between the parent project and the sub-project inside. Um, so uh, what you do see in there, uh, if we were to go in and uh, try to commit um, here, uh, we would actually be committing to the sub-project and not to uh, the parent repo. So if we run git diff inside the sub-module, uh, we can see the addition there. And um, uh, what's really nice about this is that we can uh, write a very clear uh, commit message because that's how uh, we, let our, we let our coworkers know what sort of things we did. And if we go back up to the parent project, um, and we run git status, again, we, we see that the, um, the submodule has been modified. We have to commit back into the parent as well. Um, we're getting even lazier. No quotes that time. All right, so that's kind of how I would make changes and commit them in, in my sub-project. Uh, it's a couple steps. I have to do two commits, one in each project. Um, but uh, do you have to do, like, how do you do it in your sub-projects thing? Or sub-trees. Sub-trees. A sub-tree sounds great. Like a ham and cheese, just pluck it off. Thank you for like the two people who chuckled to that. <laughs> what did I call it? There you go. That's it, right? Yeah, you're in the subproject. Okay. There you go. So, so there's I'm, a subproject and a subproject. Ah, uh, we, sub we should have thought that one through. Um, so I'm gonna. So in my case, because I have a shared history between the uh, the subtree that I brought in. Um, and the parent project, I can just make the commits directly to the subproject folder. What did you change? I changed the bin appliance file. Um, it just doesn't do anything terribly fancy. So okay. I just, I'm going to do it in Atom. You, oh. Why not? Brand plug there. It's because he doesn't know how to exit Vim. No. <laughs> Escape colon <laughs> w something. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I just this is not important, right? No, you don't need that. <laughs> so if everyone gets status there, it functions uh, pretty much as normal. But it, it looks different if you're in the root of the project, though, right? If you're back up in the Hector parent? Nope. Oh. It's the same. All right, cool. Right. It's just a subtree, not a submodule.
That's it. Yeah. Apparently, we have different definitions of important. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. Um, so you've done a commit on yours. Uh, do you have any? Uh, so you said like it's all one project now. So it kind of feels like it's just one repository. But maybe you need to update that sub project back on GitHub, right? That separate repository that you added in there. Yeah. Uh, from my understanding, this isn't something you would typically want to do. But no, so typically with subtrees, what you want to do is you want to try to stay away from dissecting which commits are part of the subtree versus which commits are part of the parent project. Uh, but it is possible. And, but just to show you the fun workarounds that you have to go through, let's go ahead and do that. So the first part is straightforward enough. Yeah, that seems easy. So but then you have to go to prefix. I think I called it subproject. Yes. Okay. And then we have to push it up to the proper remote. Now you can create a remote um, alias, so you don't have to type this in the whole time. Subproject demo. Yes. Is that what it was? That is it. And then uh, you could specify the branch you want to uh, push these changes into. I'm going to uh, push them into newest branch. Newest. Newest. Ah, I need to be top level. Let's try that again. Okay. So if I go back up to, oh, well, it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> You're in mine. Uh, but it's uh, port. It's port, so you can just click the link there. Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay. I, I prefer doing this. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Well. Do it your way. There you go. So there's that newest branch here. And that newest branch contains my uh, super important commit. All right, yeah. Remove unimportant things Kyle Macy did. Yeah. How do you do it with uh, submodules? The submodules for pushing up that submodule? Um, well, I could either, I have options. I could either CD into my submodule, and I could actually um, run git push from here. Um, but I also have this fancy command I can run from the parent because that's what you did. I feel like I'm keeping up with the Joneses here. Um, I can do git push uh, with this recurse submodules equals on demand. And what this does. Sounds like a curse word. It is. <laughs> if you've ever worked with submodules. <laughs> um, <laughs> this pushes both the commit from my parent project and, uh, and from my submodule as well. Uh, so if I run this here, it's actually going to push two things. And you can see that there. It looks kind of like doubled up, but we can see that we ran um, uh, both the subproject got pushed up, and then underneath that, uh, the parent project got pushed as well. So if I go into the web browser, and uh, look at um, Kyle Macy uh, parent project demo. I screwed it up, didn't I? You didn't even say anything this time. I don't want you to succeed. I know. We did say it's a battle to the death. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, no, that didn't, it doesn't seem to have worked at all. Going to store projects. Oh, no, it did. Yeah, okay, we're good. My face was there, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, that threw me off <laughs> every time. <laughs> um, and if we go into our uh, sub-project demo, uh, we can see in here as well our second commit that we added in uh, with Hector Sector's tweaks um, has, been, has been pushed up as well, um, which is nice. So what if I make a change to the subproject itself and you want to bring that in? Oh, so like if the if it gets been updated on GitHub yeah, or something. You want me to do that? that? Yeah. So why don't you make a change? Um, do it right in the web interface there. Master? Sure. Let's see. Now you can tell everyone the GitHub guys told you committing to master is just fine. In the UI. In the UI, yeah. of course. Is there any other way? Right. And without CI setup. This looks bad. 
<laughs> that does look bad. I swear I'm a real Ruby developer. Okay. Okay. So there's cool. a change now. Yeah, but uh, you changed it in yours, so you can pull that one down. And then you can do the same thing in mine. I changed it in GitHub School. Yeah, I'm, I'm connected to Kyle Macy. All right, fine. <laughs> fine. We can show them how to update Git remotes and you know overwrite local changes and merge things across unmatched commit histories. That'd be fine. <laughs> um, but I think for the sake of this example, uh, we'll just make the change over here as well. Yeah. yeah. That's why Kyle Macy was there. That's why it was there. OK. Commit directly to master. I like how we have a radio button, so you can really own up to it. <laughs> All right, so if I wanted to pull in uh, these updates here, um, again, kind of like with uh, pushing, I can either uh, CD into that subproject and get pull in there, but that's no fun. Um, we would like to do git submodule update, which is a nice little, little command there. Um, we want to tell it to get it from the uh, remote origin there. And we wanted to create a uh, merge commit for that. Um, or in this case, it'll probably be fast forwarded. Uh, so there probably won't be a merge commit whatsoever. Uh, yeah. OK, we can see it anyway. We can see it. So if we, if we go into that sub project, um, we see we run master here, and we run git log inside of here. Uh, we can see that remove raise call has been pulled down uh, from GitHub. And uh, as we expect here in our parent project, we run git status. Um, that uh, subproject has been committed to. Uh, so a little bit tedious here. Um, but it's not to commit, right? Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it's not tracked yet. Um, but uh, a little bit tedious here, but when you pull down and, and add any commits, you do have to commit in the parent project as well, and this kind of helps it keep in sync between the parent project and the sub-project. Um, so you might end up with uh, a few commits in your git log that look a little bit like this, um, which is either good or bad for you. But I think that's about that. And so to do something similar, uh, in my project, which is to grab the change uh, from the subproject using subtrees. Um, similar to the previous command that I used, which was a git subtree push. I'll do a git subtree pull. And the syntax is pretty similar. Uh, prefix subproject, the remote. And then the branch that we want to pull from, which I made the change on master. right? And then same thing, because we have the option, we can go ahead and squash that. Or squash it, even. <laughs> oh, no. That's what you meant. I thought you were just doing the New York thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can enter my commit ID. How do you quit Vim again? Oh, no, I'm not in Vim, actually. There you go. Uh, awesome. Um, and so in this case, there's my uh, log, and so that was me bringing in those changes from the subtree. Awesome. Well, that seems pretty, pretty easy there. Yeah. Um, but again, you wouldn't necessarily want to do these like pushing and pulling from the subproject when using subtrees, right? It's kind of like you want to permanently take your history from one repo and combine it into the other one. Right. So you're combining the history, and I think when you're pulling, it's a little bit that that's a better, it's an easier case to make mm -hmm. if you're doing a good subtree pull versus a good subtree push. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, and it's, it is harder to kind of maintain that, that separate history when it's all part of your, your parent project. Absolutely. Is that it? Yeah. OK. Um, so, so we kind of just wanted to walk you through those scenarios of uh, having a parent project, having a subproject in both the submodule case and the subtree case. Um, hopefully, that helped to clear up if there was any confusion at all. Um, or at the very least, helped uh, form a common vocabulary you can use. So thanks. Done? Awesome. Yeah, good. No? no?
Questions, right. anyone? Yes. I'm sorry? That would have been a good one to add into our thing here. Yeah, um, well, with the with the submodule, at least I can I can speak to a little bit to that because you're kind of maintaining it as a as a separate project. Um, it would work very similarly um, as if you were uh, pulling down um, in a single Git repository. Um, it'll either tell you to stash or uh, commit ch or abort changes, or if you're trying to do a Git merge, you run into conflicts there. Um, uh, you'd resolve that within that subproject the same way you would in a normal repository. Um, yeah. yeah, with the submodule, there's also that option of how you want to bring in those changes. So uh, Kyle chose the dash dash merge option. He could have uh, instead checked out to that commit instead of merging it. So in, if there's a potential merge conflict, he could have bypassed it that way or at least looked at it before the merge conflict occurred. Um, in the case of subtree, uh, because I'm really just adding, I'm, I'm squashing and adding that commit in, um, again, it, it would just be a matter of resolving a standard merge conflict. I knew that one would come up. I didn't, what was it? When to recommend using subtree versus submodules? Oh, um, yeah. So I, I think, like, uh, like we showed here, if you have uh, like a submodule that you want to, or a subproject that you want to use as like a dependency, um, that you, uh, want, you want to update and, and track changes from, maybe use it across several projects. I think you'd want to lean more towards the submodule route. Um, it, actually, it, even better than that, you might want to use you know a dependency manager. Um, but, uh, and then in the case where you want to kind of like combine those histories and treat it as one project, you know, kind of maybe not do as much development on that separate sub project, I think you would want to move towards the subtree route. One nice thing about submodules too is the ability to script some of those constant updates between the submodule and the parent project. Mm -hmm. Um, so that gives you a little bit of, it makes it a little bit simpler to work through that. Yeah. A little bit of, uh, here be dragons, um, as well too is, uh, uh, some modules can get a little bit weird too with kind of keeping uh, branches in sync between your parent project and your submodule project. Um, so uh, you, have, you have to be a little bit proactive. You can actually, in your uh, uh, Git modules configuration, you can kind of tell it to track a certain branch from the parent, uh, which is something I would recommend doing. Otherwise, uh, you could end up with a clone of the project without the proper submodules underneath. Um, by default, most of those submodule commands will actually only go a depth of one. Uh, I think you may have seen, I think it was the pull command that I did. Uh, there was a dash dash recursive there, and that'll tell it uh, to go all the way down. I don't know off the top of my head. We can check Stack Overflow again if you want, if you can specify a level of depth uh, down. <laughs> Mad pages? Start a new question, you know. <laughs> Put a bounty on that. Uh, we've got one. Um, I have not personally seen that many at once. I, in fact, um, working with uh, some of the um, companies that I've worked with as a services engineer without the tools part, um, uh, I've, I've encountered people that have had to use subtrees to kind of just merge like a single project history into another. Um, some have used it uh, to uh, like migrate from another version control system and they'll only bring over like the most recent commits at first and then they'll use a subtree to kind of bring over like a full history later um, so that they can kind of flip into production sooner, uh, uh, which that, that's kind of an, an, an interesting setup in and of itself. Um, but uh, as far as, uh, I don't think I've ever seen more than two or three subtrees. As far as submodules go, um, I, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head. Um, I think maybe Cordova? I don't remember. Uh, there's a few projects that have like a whole slew of submodules inside of it, and they'll use it as a as a dependent a dependency manager. I don't think it's Cordova, um, and uh, load everything in that way. Uh, but in that case, I would definitely try to opt for something, uh, you know, like Bundler or uh, npm or something like that for grabbing those.
yeah, a little, little bit separate there. Um, yeah, and you know, certainly put some strong consideration too before you start adding a bunch of uh, subtrees into a project because uh, you may end up kind of like bloating out a parent repository. Like you're kind of moving then towards those uh, monolithic repository styles. Um, and if you end up doing that and getting into trouble with that, later today I'll be talking about how to reduce repository sizes uh, with Git, Git LFS and the BFG repo cleaner. Yeah, so we, and I kind of teased that with my, uh, my first talk when we, we did a little bit of Git filter branch and Git and uh, BFG as well. Mm -hmm. So Kyle's going to do a deep dive into that head first. Head first. So, uh, so definitely stick around for that. Could get some modules include a UI improvement, and do we do we be in GitHub have any plans in that direction? Yeah, to improve some module integration. Um, I don't know if I don't know GitHub I does. I, I think uh, it might be a little bit outside of uh, what we're kind of privy to, um, but I do think that there might be like one or two Git contributors here that might be able to, um, to maybe able to answer that a little bit better. Um, I do know that like in the web interface for GitHub and such, uh, we have this neat thing where if you add a sub-module from GitHub and you're clicking through like that directory view in the web browser, um, and you click on the sub-module, it'll actually take you over to the other Git repository, uh, which I thought is pretty swell. All right, folks, so definitely stick around for Kyle's talk this afternoon. And the other ones, too. They're pretty great. Yeah, thank you.